Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending my talk. Um, the title of my talk is uh, The Sand of High Performance Messaging, Messaging with Nats. Uh, quick introduction about myself. My name is uh, Valdemar Quevedo. You can find me on Twitter at uh, WallyQS. Uh, GitHub is the same. I'm a software developer at Absera, based in San Francisco, where I do the development of the Absera Trusted Platform, which is an on-container orchestration solution. And for a further background, in the past I was doing development and operations from a platform service at a large uh, e-commerce website in Japan, uh, that which was based on Cloud Foundry, and that was using NATS as part of its control plane. It became a fairly large uh, deployment, so that's how I became more familiar with doing operations around NATS. And I'm also a maintainer of a couple of the client libraries for Ruby, Python 2, based on Tornado, and IsyncIO for Python 3. Um, so about this talk, uh, things I want to share with you is uh, first, uh, what is Nats? Then what is, all the, what is the design behind Nats, um, how it works, and why I like it? Then move on to start talking on what is, uh, what, what, how can we start using uh, uh, Nats for building distributed systems. So let's get started. And what is Nats? Uh, Nats is a high-performance messaging system. It was created by Derek Collison originally in 2010 for Cloud Foundry. It was first written in Ruby with Event Machine. Then there was a rewrite in Go in 2012, uh, which gave it a lot of much, uh, many performance benefits. It is open source under the MIT license, and you can find it on GitHub under the NATS-IO organization. Uh, it's a very small binary, thanks to Go, uh, the Go team, and the design decisions there. Uh, it is only seven megabytes in size. It's one of the smallest, uh, it's a fairly small uh, Docker image as well. It's a single binary, so it has very few layers. and has no other deployment dependencies. Uh, so that's uh, very uh, convenient. Uh, in terms of the project, uh, one of the things, one of the goals of it is that it tries to act as an always available dial tone for different clients to be able to communicate within, that, within a service, with the service. And, but of course, one of its main characteristics is this, uh, the performance, which uh, if you use the NATS bench um, micro benchmark uh, tool, which is available in the repo, uh, here we're sending 100 million messages. Uh, you can see that you can get a throughput of around uh, 10 million messages per second with a single byte, which is still a micro benchmark, and which could be quite impressive. But for much thorough uh, benchmarks, uh, I highly recommend the blog from Tyler Treat, which is in the audience. And there he makes a much better comparison of how NATS fares and what are some of the traders involved, because there are traders involved in, in NATS uh, compared with these other messaging systems. So this is the link at, at the bottom. Um, so we might need a, an update some of this because Nats has been evolving as well there. But, and, uh, but this talk is not mainly about only performance, but how Nats keep things uh, simple. So Nats has simplicity and performance as its main traits. So moving on to the design uh, behind Nats, Nats has a design that uh, was kept constrained so that it's uh, operationally simple and reliable as possible, but without compromising both performance and uh, on the scalability. This is because uh, simplicity matters. I mean, you're familiar, I mean, you uh, will be familiar with the work from Rich Hickey. Um, there's a great talk on the RailsConf a couple of years ago where I was fortunate to attend and really, uh, really like that, I recommend, where uh, he explains that simplicity buys you opportunity. And then he, he goes on to define that there is uh, something called like um, architectural agility. And by architectural agility, he means that having a system that is, uh, that the, the one you get by having a system that is fundamentally simple. And that type of agility dominates over any other type of agility. And how NATS achieves simplicity? simplicity? Uh, it does so by having a consist, um, a strictly limited feature set. It does nothing but pure publish subscribe. So unlike other messaging systems, for example, it doesn't have built-in persistence of messages. It doesn't have any uh, exactly once delivery promises. Instead, those concerns are simplified away from NATS. As a thought exercise of, uh, to put in the minds of what 
uh, what is the problem that NAS is trying to uh, solve is uh, think of yourself what could be the fastest, simplest, and most reliable way of writing and reading to a socket to communicate to one-to-one, one-to-end number of nodes. Uh, for NATs, this means choosing TCP IP and having an always established TCP connection with the server. And over this always established connection to the server, you use a very simple plain text protocol and do nothing but pure publish subscribe. And it is a fire and forget system uh, with, in terms of delivery guarantees, you could say it's a, a most once delivered meaning that if someone is not plugged into the system and interested into a subject, then that message will be just dropped into the floor. And this is the NATS protocol. Uh, it's, it's fairly simple. It's very, um, uh, very few number of commands. You can publish messages, subscribe into a topic, unsubscribe from it. From the server, you would be receiving uh, messages. And there's a ping and pong, which both the client and the server uh, send each other. And initial info, uh, we, tell, we tell the client how to um, handle the connection with the server. And also the client can send these connect uh, payloads um, to label its connection. And there's a couple of error notifications as well. So I will just make a quick uh, run through to the, uh, to the protocol. Uh, this is uh, the demo public site, so you feel free to try it as well. Uh, we're, this is a very simple client, and telnet demo.natsio on the port 4222. Um, uh, the first thing we get is this uh, info string, which is going to tell you whether the server requires, whether we have to start TLS, and also what is the maximum payload size that we can use for each one of the published, uh, published messages to the server. And yeah, we can send a, an optional um, connect command. It is, uh, you have to send it in case the server requires uh, authentication credentials. Uh, but here we just label our connection as a NATS a strange loop client. It has to be a JSON string. Of course, we can send a ping and receive a pong back to the server, which can be useful to measure the round trip latency. And if both either the client or the server don't do this periodically, and by default this is an interval of every two minutes, uh, the server will chop the connection off and take it out, the, take the client out. And this is uh, the basic uh, subscribe functionality. So here we express interest on the hello subject, and we use an arbitrary identifier with number 10. Uh, this is sort of the local uh, logic from the client. And if we send uh, five bytes on this subject here, um, you can see like there's a number five and in the control line. This will make, this will make the server expect uh, the next five, to read the next five bytes, and if he doesn't follow that, then we'll consider that he's not following the protocol and also disconnect the, the, the client. But if everything goes well, then we will receive this in uppercase uh, message on the hello subject, which is matching with the original subscription we made, and is telling the client to read the next five bytes that uh, the server is sending, so here we have sent our message to ourselves. Something important to highlight here is that the payload is opaque to the server. So for the server, it is just bytes, and meaning that it could be really anything. You can use a JSON, message pack, protocol buffers. Uh, that's up to the client libraries to uh, decide. And so this is OK for doing one to n uh, broadcast communication. So let's talk about like how does NATS achieve doing one to one communication with doing nothing but pure publish subscribe, right? So the problem here is how can we send a request and expect a single response back with nothing but pure uh, so publish subscribe? The way NATS addresses this is quite interesting, and it does so by having these uh, ephemeral subscription inboxes. And they work the same as the other types of subscription, so it is still pure publish subscribe. And the NATS client libraries, they have uh, helpers to be able to create these uh, random strings. And all of the client libraries, they're quite sensitive to their reliability because they're random involved. There's randomness involved. They are sensitive to the reliability of the available pseudo random number generation that you have in your runtime. And, but this is how you can uh, use it. For example, in the, in the Go API, this will give you a unique uh, inbox that you can use and then express to the server that you're interested in this subject, giving uh, an ID. Then 
we tell the server that we have limited interest in this topic and we only want to receive a single message on this subscription that we have locally identified with a number two. Then we move on to actually publishing the message and here we're telling a mess sending a message on the health subject, tagging it with this ephemeral inbox and telling the server to read the next five bytes that we have, so please. Then if and only if there's another subscriber connected at that moment and interested in helping into this subject, then it will be receiving a message matching to that um, subscription that it uh, had done previously, and it will perceive the inbox that this other client uh, has sent, and then we'll reuse this uh, inbox to make a reply onto that subject directly. And finally, if the original requester is still connected to the server and it is, has not received any other messages because we're only interested in receiving one, because um, so the first one will win, it will, the server will send um, the message on the, to this client. So here's uh, 11 bytes telling that uh, I can help. And this is roughly the core functionality from Nats, and everything just uh, builds on top of this. Uh, so I, I guess, I, I hope you can get an idea that's a fairly simple protocol, and because it's a simple protocol, you have also very simple clients. And all of the, the client libraries uh, tend to have very small footprint. They don't have, they don't, are like this, uh, not dozens and dozens of lights of complicated logic. Um, the Nats Go client is, uh, well, I, I have to double check, but it's, it's very small. And we have many of these. Um, original implementation was the Ruby-based client uh, using the event machine. Uh, so, but now the canonical implementation is the Go client. So other, other client libraries uh, reference the implementation from this, from this one to see uh, what, um, what are the features that they have to implement. And, but now there are many more available. So officially, the Nats team is um, supporting like C, C Sharp, Java, there's a couple of Python ones, Node.js, and El Elixir too. There are many contributed by the community too. There's even one for Nginx. This one is uh, quite interesting, and uh, it's what we use at, the, at AppSera for dynamically uh, getting notification of where to reverse or proxy the routes to the applications that are running inside of the cluster. So we don't do any kind of like uh, reloading of Nginx configuration or yet another proxy that is going to be doing that. So it's just like by having an Nginx hooked into, the, into Nats, it will almost instantly know where to uh, send the traffic. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. And something important to note about the clients is that they're asynchronous uh, mostly. So they, they have asynchronous operation. Uh, they do asynchronous I.O. This is an example from the Go client where you're interested in the hello subject and we're sending 1,000 messages. But at this point in the code, there is no guarantee of uh, having actually sent these, these bytes. So we have to do an extra step if we're interested in having, ensuring that we have actually sent this. Uh, reason for this is that there is our internal engine built into the clients where they do quality of the writes in order to get uh, not just be writing to the sockets all the time. So in order to ensure that we have actually sent all of these messages, um, we append an extra ping at the end of the buffer and we make a future so that we're expecting a pong back from the server. And this way we can ensure that the server has consumed all of the bytes that we're sending and in the order that we write it into the socket. Um, Coincidentally, this is one of the worst ways of measuring, nat measuring Nats performance. Like, uh, sometimes like, um, there are new users from Nats and they hear that have a, uh, it, has, it has good performance and it's really fast. So they make uh, this uh, simple loop where they're sending as many messages as possible. And they have this other subscription and they try to measure how, like, how long did it start to finish consuming all of these messages. And it's quite, quite funny what happens uh, when you try to do this. So here we have in the top screen the, the client sending as many messages as possible. In the middle is the server. And you can see that um, there's this slow consumer detected errors being logged into the server. And at the bottom, there's a small utility that I wrote in Go. It's a um, NAT stop, which uh, 
monitors, uh, give you this terminal UI to monitor the server. And you can see there's a slow consumer count increasing. And so basically the original client is becoming disconnected and then trying to reconnect and disconnected, trying to reconnect, trying to send all of those messages, but the server is just uh, uh, con disconnecting it. Reason for this is that the client is becoming a slow consumer since it said that it was interested into, into this uh, help subject, hello subject, but because it is so busy at sending all of these messages, uh, this, the server has to continuously um, increase the pending data size from the client. So at the, at the point this could affect the whole service, so it becomes unsustainable for it and it will just disconnect it. And basically the NAT server is uh, protecting itself. Uh, this is because NAT is not only performance and simplicity, uh, it's also a resilient messaging server, mm -hmm. which is kind of the three main traits that define uh, the implementation of NATs. Uh, this is not all, all the features that it has. Uh, there's also subject routing support with wildcards. You can do authorization rules on them. And uh, there's distribution queue, distribution queue groups, uh, clustering mode. Uh, as I said, at, at the, you can uh, upgrade to a TLS connection and has monitoring endpoints like uh, bar C style from which you can get the uh, state from the, uh, from the server. This is an example of how the wildcards work. Here we have a dot, separate, dot uh, separated uh, subject where we can, if we could use the, if you the asterisk wildcard, then it will match to anything that is uh, published on this, um, on this subject matching to this wildcard. Uh, one example from this is since we know that all of the NAS requests are going to be underscore uppercase inbox, we can subscribe to all of the requests that are happening in, through the server. Uh, by using underscore inbox dot asterisk. And there's an even a stronger uh, wildcard, which is called the full wildcard. This one will match everything after the dot to, that is published on, on the server. So if we make a hello dot full wildcard subscription, this will match uh, messages such as hello world uh, dot again. So it continu it's continues to match. Uh, very, this is very strong, so um, if you try to connect right now to the demo.natsio uh, endpoint and subscribe just on the full wildcard, you will start seeing all of the messages that are happening right now in the server. So yeah, I think someone is publishing some uh, JSON messages um, all the time. And if you try to publish on the underscore uh, sys, uh, you can see that the server, this allows you because uh, it is reserving that name for uh, internal messages. And you can customize this by uh, having a static configuration from the server where, for example, you can have an above user only being allowed to make requests and Alice user being able to uh, subscribe and publish to anything. Um, this is uh, uh, roughly some of the, well, most of the feature set from NATS. So next, I want to uh, start covering on the, what are some of the examples from actually using NATS and um, building distributed systems with it. So this is a familiar scenario for many, I think. So we may have an external API server with it's being by, receiving requests by an external load balancer, and this one by each, each, each time that is receiving a request, we'll have to in, in, uh, talk with these uh, other internal services, like some service E, which then has to talk to this other service B for internal communication. And if we horizontally, horizontally scale this deployment, then it might look something like this, where everything is point-to-point uh, -point connecting uh, to each other, and it becomes this, the, the whole dead star microservices. Uh, kind of thing, and then we'll have to start thinking about um, how to do communication within this system, and we may think, where should we use just just use HTTP uh, everywhere or some point, some forum point-to-point -point RPC, and we we'll have to solve the problems of like uh, how to do service discovery and load balancing of the services, and if at this point we are um, 
interested in having con in concerning having a sub millisecond latency performance. Uh, yeah, it can get uh, interesting, but this is because uh, it's the nature of uh, distributed uh, systems, right? Which is uh, tend to be uh, this levels of fun. So, what does NATS uh, gives us? Uh, NATS gives us um, basic published subscribe based low latency mechanism for communicating one to one, one to n number of nodes, and we have this always established connection to the server. NATS is not a system where you have to create uh, a new connection for each one of the requests that you want to send. It is meant to have always this connection and basically have a, a, lay, a dial tone. So uh, it is supposed to be uh, easy to use because it lays near in the literal implement uh, definition, easy. And so communicating through NATS may look something like this, where we have all of the services that are plug plugged into NATS. Then you may think, uh, but then this makes NATS become a single point of failure, and I don't really want to have single point of failures in my distributed system. Uh, there's a way to prevent this by uh, making a full mesh uh, cluster mode from NATS. So this way, you can have uh, your different services uh, connected into, into one of the NATS nodes. And they don't necessarily have to be the same node. If you see the arrows here, um, we have these services um, connected to this node, and these are connected to this one. And then full mesh one hop uh, clustering mode from NATS will be routing the messages through all of the uh, subscribers and publishers. And because of the, thanks to the built-in uh, client reconnection logic, whenever um, one of these nodes, nodes goes away or, or dies or crashes, uh, well, yeah, the client libraries will uh, reconnect uh, to another available, immediately available uh, server. And the API for, for doing this is just uh, use a comma separated list of the, of the servers that are available. But there is a bonus. Uh, now the clients as of recent releases, they, have, uh, they can discover the topology from the cluster dynamically. Uh, this is an example of the auto discovery. So let's say that you have uh, your infrastructure in AWS or uh, some cloud based um, deployment and you create a box uh, where you have your running NATs and you don't know, really know what are the other IPs from this, the other cluster nodes, but you create one and then tell them this new NATs uh, server where the other server is. So this will, this will create the mesh, the mesh and as soon as you do this, uh, yeah the original server will notify all of the clients where is the, the, where is the new um, member from the cluster. And all of these clients will reconfigure automatically and be aware of where this other NATS uh, server is. And if you add yet another node, uh, the same thing will happen. And now the clients are aware of the full um, uh, cluster topology, meaning that if this server dies for some reason, uh, well, yeah, here they're all connected now, it's uh, all good, but if the one goes away, uh, by default they will randomly try to reconnect to one of, one of the other immediately available uh, nodes uh, within the cluster. Uh, so I'm talking about some examples of how to actually use this uh, NATS for communicating. Uh, a very, very basic example could be, um, for example, doing um, heartbeats. And uh, this is a very ba basic uh, mechanism, for example, to publish. Um, you, we can, you can have your services periodically publish heartbeats on a, um, on a subject so that uh, you can express the liveness of the, of the service. And you can leverage the, these heartbeats to create uh, this, some sort of discovery as well. So here you use the wildcard on the, <coughs> on the service uh, dot asterisk uh, dot heartbeats and you will receive all of the other publishes from the nodes. And 
So you can discover is, um, who, who else is talking in, inside of the cluster. And as NATS also supports uh, distribution queues. And the way to use distribution queues is when you, well, the use case is where you don't necessarily want to uh, broadcast all of your messages, and rather you want to distribute the work uh, between uh, a set of workers. And the way to do this, to use this functionality is by having a, making a subscri subscription, and just like the other subscriptions, uh, let's say it's service.a, uh, separated by the space and workers, this will create a, a distribution queue named workers. So now, if we send, a publish a message on this service.a, each one of these messages will be balanced randomly among the uh, service, these different service nodes. So it's not broadcasted anymore. Uh, each one of them will receive it randomly. Yeah, it's not round robin randomly. And the API for doing this is uh, Q subscribe. And here we are subscribing to the service A and using the, using the name uh, workers for this group. Something important to note of uh, NATS, the way the additional queues work is that NATS does not assume the audience, meaning that you can have multiple distribution queues from the same, same subject. So here we have, um, we, uh, sub, we're subscribing to service A using distribution queue named workers. We could have in, this, in parallel also a service.a uh, helpers distribution group and even a wildcard which will be matching uh, on anything that is uh, service.a, b, c. If we publish a message, they all will be receiving the message, right? So, um, NATS is, uh, does not, uh, well, this is what we call by not assuming the audience. Um, and this is where NATS uh, really shines. And if we were interested in having the lowest latency response from one of the service nodes, um, by the very definition, by the way, by the very, by the very definition of the NATS request, uh, the first message that you get back from a request in NATS is the one with the lowest latency. And so this is uh, where NATS, uh, this is because the NATS requests were designed for this, basically. And the, the API for this is the NATS um, use the connection and send a request in service V. For example, uh, telling the with the payload and in the API from the clients, you need to give a timeout, a client timeout, after which you will give up waiting for this uh, message. And but if, if there is other subscriber on this service being willing to help, then this other subscriber can use this uh, inbox to reply back and uh, request uh, help back. And. Something important to note here is that uh, since the messaging uh, system, and as some, um, you need to be more careful with the error handling. So for example, the reason why something failed uh, could be many things. So in, in, from the client side, you're, on make, you're only making a request and expecting a single response, and let's say that you hit the timeout. Uh, this could have occurred for a number of reasons. Um, it could have been the case that the service uh, was unavailable at that time, and there was no one really connected into the system. Or maybe it did receive the re request, but um, just the service, the service took too long to reply back. Or maybe it was uh, processing the request, but it crashed while uh, and handling this. So we need to be more um, uh, careful when how to do error handling in these cases. And for example, if we want to confirm that a uh, service is uh, it's available, we could have a, and all of the services have its own inbox, and they might make an extra request on to get, uh, basically to check if there is anybody out there uh, willing to help. And then this uh, other service could reply back with its own inbox, and then we use that another, um, that inbox to make an extra request and communicate uh, directly to this uh, other, uh, to this uh, service node. 
And so, yeah, okay, so just to uh, summarize, and uh, that's a simple, fast, and uh, reliable solution for the internal communication of a distributed system. And especially if you're flexible when um, in the cut, uh, when how to handle the internal communication in it. And it does choose uh, simplicity and reliability over uh, guaranteed delivery. But this does not mean that uh, NATS will constrain the guarantees from your service, right? Um, if you were at the Papers We Love conf uh, that happened a couple of days ago, and there was this great talk on the end-to-end, -end, which covered the end-to-end -end argument. And um, there it was saying that uh, this type of guarantees for your application, you need uh, stop relying on lower subsystems and instead like put, uh, code them on a higher layer. Uh, because um, and, and if you can, um, if you don't do so, um, by having this other optimization in lower layers, uh, you can end up um, wa wasting your time and uh, causing confusion since um, there's no guarantee that it will give these guarantees on the higher layer. And there's an even a stronger variation of that argument which uh, even causes, uh, it is harmful to, to do so. So just to quoting uh, uh, Kyle, Kyle, uh, Tyler Treat who gave a great talk about Nats and he put it very succinctly, I thought, uh, we can always build stronger guarantees on top but we can always remove them uh, from below. And meaning that if we start thinking in terms of, um, for example, having designed our system to be able to um, replay the messages instead, and then that becomes um, uh, more important than having just a guaranteed delivery. And if we can design our system so that you can safely retry um, the request, that can be um, better than having ex exactly once delivery. And also if we're, or, or, our system is, um, can sustain having a rearranging of the messages, uh, this can be better than just having other delivery. And our system could end up being more resilient by following these traits. And but again, this is not NATS. Uh, this, uh, there's a related NATS project which uh, is trying to address these concerns. Uh, it's named NATS Streaming, uh, if you want to check it out. Um, so I'm okay on time, but... Um, so I guess uh, that's it for my talk. So I really uh, thank you for attending, and yeah, feel free to play with the uh, demo site. And I think there's time for Q and A too. Yeah. <clears throat> or I can demo that. Too. Uh, so yeah, you have to, there's a routing happening between the servers, so if the server is aware of a, uh, there's a subscriber interested in the subject, then it will be routing the message to this uh, other node, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, it's all, this is Nats, basically. Um, let's say, so yeah. This is a very simple example of using it. Mm. Yeah, any other uh, questions? Uh, yes. So, so in practice, uh, like how, how often do you lose messages even though there are no guarantees? How, how often? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that really depends on the... Uh, yeah, on the application. So, so, uh, so how often does the server loses messages? Uh, it just so then uh, that's really not responsibility from Nats from the way it was designed, right? So Nats will try to 
uh, send the message, but if there is no one really connected to consume that message or receive it, uh, then uh, that was it for that message. I mean, it just got not be sent, yeah. Not be received for, by anyone. Yeah. yeah. So you have to have a listener to receive the message or to know there's no persistence. I'm assuming there's no persistence in memory for any amount of time. No. Uh, so yeah, I mean, NATS is used on um, quite a few number of production systems. I mean, you can see the website to look at the full list of who's uh, putting in production. Um, I think like um, many of the deployments from Cloud Foundry, for example, they use NATS and they have deployment level applications as well. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, it has some uh, quite uh, usage for uh, the type of problems that NATS is solving, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, that sounds like a, a same use case, like for internal communication about components using um, as a control plane. Yeah, it's uh, not just very suited for that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, not, uh, so NATS streaming is um, basically it mounts on top of NATS, and so it reuses NATS itself. It's not a, a NATS application, you could say. And on top of NATS, uh, it creates this other layer where um, it tries to give you these type of guarantees, where exactly once delivery and uh, replaying the previous messages that had been sent and no one re uh, consumed, for example. So, so yeah, it tries to address some of the concerns that are in this slide. And, but I guess the point here is that uh, those concerns were uh, separated into different projects. And is that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any other question? Yeah. Yes. Uh, did, did you measure like uh, the latency end to end from like uh, sending a message to getting it out of the side? So the tail of the uh, so, so for that, uh, yeah, luckily we have Tyler Treat in the audience, and he did a great job at showing that. Um, uh, so, what, um, what is it? Tangor sentence. Uh, but I mean, we can uh, uh, talk later on this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not then uh, close. Yeah. If there are any more questions, then I would like to thank uh, again for your time and hope you like uh, enjoy, enjoying that and play with the demo server. And I'll, I'm around to talk if you want to uh, check out the demo or or yeah, I can help you. Okay. Thank you.